Dear friends, we have uh, gathered here in the protective shelter of God's healing love. Here we are free to pour out our grief, to release our anger, to face our emptiness, and to know that God cares. We gather here as God's people conscious of others who have died and of the frailty of our own existence here on earth. We come to comfort and to support one another in our common loss. We also gather to hear God's word of hope that can drive away our despair and even move us to offer God our praise. We gather to commend to God with thanksgiving the life of James Wrestler. For as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Christ who is Lord both of the dead and of the living. Let us pray. O holy God, whose ways are not our ways and whose thoughts are not our thoughts, grant that your Holy Spirit may intercede for us with sighs too deep for human words. Heal our wounded hearts made heavy by our sorrow. And through the veil of our tears and the silence of our emptiness, assure us again that ear has not heard, nor eye seen, nor human imagination envisioned what you have prepared for those who love you through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. First scripture I'd like to uh, share is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where you are, I may be also. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I've said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. And the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. So as we gather here to celebrate the man you loved, and the man you love, to celebrate Jim, I'd like to share this poem entitled The Dash. I read of a man who stood at a funeral of a friend. And he referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth and now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things that you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that still can be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show more appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a while. So when your eulogy is being read, with your life's actions to rehash, 
Would you be proud of the things they say about how you live your dash? As we gather here this afternoon to celebrate the life of Jim Raisler, it is important that we remember how he not only lived that dash, but savored it. Jim was born in Amherst on June 15th, 1943, and he lived in his childhood home for all but seven years of his life. When he was a senior in high school, I think he was unaware of a young, pretty freshman girl named Peggy, who would later become his wife of 54 years. You know, their official uh, first meeting occurred at the Amherst Hospital where Peggy worked uh, with Jim's mom. And Jim introduced himself to her as Sal. I'm Sal. Maybe he just wanted to get away with stuff, who knows? But it wasn't until later that they would arrange to go on a date, and of course the rest is their history and your history. Jim's education was extensive, but he never really used it specifically in his job at Nordson. No, Jim was happy to simply remain here in Amherst and to live in his boyhood home. Here, he and Peggy would raise their family. Above all else, Jim was a family man. He could be stubborn, like his mom, but it was also a good quality for him to have because it meant that he would never sacrifice his family for his job. He would arrange his shifts at work to accommodate his kids' games and activities. It wasn't unusual to find Jim sacrificing sleep in order to be at his kids' events. He even became a soccer coach because Peggy volunteered him, even though he knew nothing about soccer. But he knew enough to care about spending time with his boy. And I understand he became a very good soccer coach. Jim was the disciplinarian in the Raceler home. Peggy is the softie. His daughter told me that if they did anything wrong, Peggy would say, wait till your father comes home. At dinner, Peggy would say, so, tell your father what you did today. Of course, Jim didn't like having to be the disciplinarian, but he did it because he knew it needed to be done. The family didn't always have a lot of money, but that did not stop them from having great vacations and memories to make. They remember going to Nags Head. Do you remember your Nags Head vacation? Of course, you probably remember more Sunset Beach or Hilton Head. Oh, they were always there, not only with their family, but with friends. I think you traveled in a pack of over 100 for vacations. Traveling with their friends, playing games with their extended family, that was a full life. Jim may have been the disciplinarian, but he was also the goof in the family. He loved to be silly, to make others laugh, just to enjoy life. And it was appropriate that right before I walked in here, you were listening to some Motown because he just loved music, and especially Motown. No, Jim's life is not defined by his birth date or death date. His is defined by how he lived, his dash. Now he hated that his daughter Debbie suffered so much, as you all did. And it probably broke his heart, which ironically is why he died. He died really of a broken heart, and it's tragic. But it is a lesson for all of us, and especially for you, his family, and beloved ones. Jim never held back his love, so don't hold back your love. And never forfeit time, which Jim never did, Never forfeit your time with each other. That was his lesson. And that was the gift and his treasure. And that is the inheritance he leaves behind. His was a dash well lived. Amen. Does anyone else have a story that they'd like to share or a memory? It's too many. Too many. You'll share them throughout your lives, I'm sure. Is there anyone? Well, let's share our affirmation of faith. 
We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we know that in everything God works for good with those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. O God, our strength and our Redeemer, giver of life and conqueror of death, we praise you with humble hearts. With faith in your great mercy and wisdom, we entrust the body of Jim to your eternal care. We praise you for your steadfast love for him all the days of his earthly life and for his faithfulness to the fellowship of Christ. We thank you for all that he was to those who loved him, a loving husband and father and friend and grandpa. Oh, we thank you that for Jim all sickness and sorrow are ended and death itself is past and that he has entered the home where all your people gather in peace. Keep us all in communion with your faithful people and every time and place that at last we may rejoice together in the heavenly family where Jesus Christ reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jim. Knowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your fold, a lamb of your own flock, son of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the company of the saints in light. Amen. Before I offer the benediction and we get ready to move out to the uh, cemetery, I just would like to share something entitled The Song of Simeon. If you go back to your Sunday school days, you may remember that Simeon uh, was the guy that was waiting at the temple when Joseph and Mary brought their newborn baby, just born in Bethlehem, a few days afterward. They brought him to Jerusalem, which was just about six, seven miles away, and they traveled to the temple where Simeon had been waiting almost all his life to look upon the face of God's Holy One. And when they brought that baby in, he immediately knew that that was God's holy one. So this is known as the Song of Simeon. Holy one, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Savior Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything give you everything you need to do his work and to do the work that is pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen <laughs>